so You're listening to a Mamma Mia podcast. Mamma Mia acknowledges the traditional owners of land and waters that this podcast is recorded on. Welcome to Cancelled, the podcast that looks at silly celebrity crimes and assigns charges and sentences to them so we can all move on with our lives. I'm Claire Stevens, and I'm joined by... Jessie Stevens. And Jess, do you have a Lazy Girl story? Yes, I do. And it is a new genre. Would you like to guess the genre of my Lazy Girl story? No. Health. Okay. Lazy Girls can be lazy about health. Yes. Okay. So, this is from Gemma. And about two months ago, she had a mystery pain in what she describes as her tum-tum. Oh, no. And the GP said it could be gallstones, so to go and get an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And she actually did this because it was bad enough that, you know, she could be bothered. And the ultrasound showed some inflammation but no actual stones. So she got referred to a surgeon with a two-month waiting list, right? Lazy girls hate that. Yes, the message then pops up, right? It's been two months. The message mm. pops up and it says, come to your appointment. Just a reminder, your appointment is tomorrow. You go, oh. Reply with a Y or an N. Yeah. Well, it wasn't hurting anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Her tum-tum. About health. Wasn't currently, currently uncomfortable. Hurting. And so she looked at that message and she replied N. <gasps> and she figures if it gets bad, I'll have to go to the hospital and then they can sort these things out for me, <laughs> yeah. is how she put it. Lazy girl. She's a lazy girl. <laughs> Lovely. I love that. Lovely. How often does that happen? That's the thing about health and lazy girls is that health is this thing that has to be dealt with quite consistently. Yes. Um, I had a one-year checkup, one year on, from a surgery mm. and I got a message going, we'll see you next week. And I just went, oh, no, no, no. No, it's fine, that was a year ago, yeah. Jesse's yeah. problem. Yeah. No, I just went in and I just ignored <laughs> that. I've been getting oh. calls. Oh, you need to check up. Well, inevitably there will be problems. And when the problems emerge, <laughs> Arise, I'll, I'll hap- call you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll haphazardly book an appointment that I need urgently. Yes, yeah, exactly right. Jesse, on today's episode, we're talking about Victoria Caroline Beckham. Okay, so I'm not going to do any preamble or anything like that. I'm just going to go straight in. I think you need to at least start with, like, a greeting. If you can address the audience directly, people like that. Hello, fans. Um, that was amazing. I mean, Spot so, on, right? So good. Yeah, really so good. good. That was you're, you're one take. Victoria Beckham is a British designer, singer, and television personality, and she rose to fame in the 90s as Posh Spice in the Spice Girl. I need some love. You dressed as posh spice. I was posh. So in our family, I was posh. You were baby. You were sporty. I was sporty. Yeah, you mm-hmm. were sporty. Mm-hmm. You had like little crop top. Mm. You were sporty, mm-hmm. even though you were not sporty at all. A very white stomach and no <laughs> definition. And I was like, I'm just like Mel B. C. Yeah. F. One of the Mel. One of the I'm Mel's. just like Mel. <laughs> and then and I try and do a high kick, but I'd get like a quarter got, of the way up. Oh no, I've hurt my hip. <laughs> and then our brother Nick was, was baby, baby spice. Our brother Jack was scary. And then and our, our neighbour Georgina was, was ginger. Oh ginger, ginger, ginger. But Sorry. I don't know what we did once we were dressed up. We sang songs such as Stop Right Now. Did we? Yes. None of us could I sing. Was, no, I was modeling the vocals. <laughs> but I got distracted because I was also doing high kicks. <laughs> I would just wear these like black, black petticoats. Yeah, a black petticoat Nan. from Nan and then you just kind of dance on your own. <laughs> it's, weird. it's actually really weird. <laughs> Once the Spice Girls split up in 2001, Beckham had a solo career before becoming an internationally recognised style icon and fashion designer. Such a rebrand. She did a bunch of collaborations with other brands and then started her own label in 2008. What's her label called? Like Victoria Beckham. Oh, yeah. Nice. She's married to footballer David Beckham. What? And she has four <laughs> children. <gasps> Brooklyn. Brookie. Brookie B. Romeo. Why, Romeo, are thou mad? Cruz. Yeah. And Harper. Is Harper a girl? Girl. Yeah, okay. only girl. Jesse, my structure for today is as follows. Firstly, not being able to sing. Secondly, eating and exercise. Thirdly, is the marriage a sham? <laughs> Fourthly, a $54 million debt. And finally, do you hate your daughter-in-law? Yes, thank you. Y slash N. That will be the third time <laughs> we have covered such a story on cancer. First, with Brookie. Secondly, with Nicola. Nicola. Thirdly, from a different perspective. Yes. 
Jessie, not being able to sing. Victoria Beckham (laughs) was a member of one of the greatest pop groups of all time, except it's largely thought that she can't really sing. Jessie, these are some... But who can? Like, you can't tell me that... I'm trying to think of another pop group. No, the others carried it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But what I'm trying to say is that, like, the Backstreet Boys, you can't tell me that all five could sing. Jessie, I'm just going to play you some isolated Victoria Beckham vocals. She was there for the vibe. That was a good note. (laughs) I don't think she's roundly bad. I think I heard her hit one good note and three bad notes, which means she's 25% okay. Interestingly, the Spice Girls became famous with a song that Beckham didn't actually sing on, which was Wannabe. Mm -hmm. So apparently her background vocals are somewhere in there, but she's the only one without a verse to herself. Okay. I'd say I'm happy to be along for the ride, TVH. I don't need to be featured. I feel like, remember S Club 7? Like six of them didn't sing. Some of them are on stage for stage presence, vibe. No, that's it. It's the vibe. Look, making things look even. (laughs) (laughs) And that's fine. In 2016, Victoria Beckham said, they used to turn my mic off and just let the others sing. And then she added that she used to just jig about a bit. (laughs) In 2018, she talked about how she used to joke about it, but in all seriousness, during recording sessions, there'd be post-its up all over the walls reading, do not sing, posh don't sing, VB don't sing. She wrote the other girls' coattails. That would be hard as a pop star. A few years ago, Mel B said that when they performed, Victoria Beckham's mic would be turned all the way down. But the band's founder got mad because he's a bit like you and he said none of them were perfect. Mm. They had strengths and weaknesses. Mm. In her audition, she did score a 5 out of 10 for singing. (laughs) (laughs) But we trained her. What I'm seeing is, and this is something that hasn't been passed on to Brookie, is we work smarter, not harder. Mm. All right? Name a greater winner than someone who is in the most popular girl band of all time but cannot sing to save her life. I know. I could not respect an endeavour more. It's very impressive. She went on to then have a solo career. Yeah, that was audacious. Which is a lot when you can't sing. She was the last to embark on the solo career. She was clearly a bit hesitant because she's like, I'm no Mariah Carey over here. But here's her performing one of her solo songs live. So she can't sing. Do I like listening to Victoria Beckham sing? Yes. <laughs> that was really interesting. She has that. a really 90s tone to her voice that I quite like. They trained her well. They yeah. trained her in projection. They trained her in... Annunciation. Annunciation and basically how to talk. I think that's what I would sound like with training. Interesting. Well... I'd like it on the record that Victoria Beckham is just an okay singer. (laughs) However, I say that's not a crime. That's absolutely fine. I admire her tenacity. I respect it. And the fact she continued to be a pop star. She didn't let a lack of talent stop her. Inspiration to all of us. I agree. I agree. Especially inspiration to Brookie who went, you say I can't chef? Look what I made. Look. Brooklyn. Yeah, because he's like, I grew up believing I could do anything. My mum can't sing. Look at her. And she made so much money from the Spice Girls. She really can't. She can't even sing a lullaby. No. And yet, she's one of the Spice Girls. Look at her go. Jessie, eating and exercising. Speaking on a podcast in 2022, David Beckham made it quite clear that his wife isn't really that into food. He said he gets quite emotional about food and wine, but... Unfortunately... I'm married to someone that has eaten the same thing for the last 25 <laughs> years. Since yeah. since I've met her, Victoria, yeah. Yeah. she she only eats you know grilled fish, steamed vegetables. She'll very rarely deviate away from there. He then tells a story about how she has only shared what's on his plate once, and she's never done it since. Yeah. The only time that she's ever probably shared something that's been on my plate was actually when she was pregnant with Harper. Do you remember? And what it was? was the most amazing thing. It was one of my favourite 
evenings. Did he say what was on? His no, okay. he can't remember. Meanwhile, Victoria has said she's a nightmare at restaurants because she needs to season all her own stuff. She doesn't like butter or oil or anything, like sauces, so she needs to do it all herself. And she said her go-to snack is toast with salt. Oh, that's a strange food. Yeah. In 2023, she said, I'm disciplined with my eating. That's how I find I get the most out of my body. She says her treat is a few glasses of red wine and tequila and she loves carbs. She says, I have lots of avocado, good fats. She did say each morning the first thing I do is have three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar followed by a mug of hot water Mm -hmm. and lemon and multiple coffees. Now, that's food. When it comes to exercise, in 2019, she spoke to The Guardian's Weekend magazine and said she starts her day between 5.30 and 6 a.m., with a seven kilometre run on the treadmill before doing legs, arms and core work with her personal trainer. Before or after her lemon water? I guess kind of after, but it takes two hours in total. She said those seven kilometres are the only time she watches TV, so she looks forward to that. Okay. But I tried that. Do you remember in 2019 I did a story where I tried to live like Victoria Beckham Victoria Beckham's, yeah. It took me till 3 (laughs) p.m. to do her exercise. And then her day was over. I went, oh. As in it took you that many hours. To get to seven kilometres and do like arms, legs and core. Were you working that day? No, it was a Saturday. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I just thought it it was too much. Too much time. Too too much much in hindsight. Well, I mean, the woman no longer sings. You know, maybe she could outsource a lot of her fashion in, in, Mm. in which case she might have the time. Does she have a disordered relationship with exercise and food? Well, it does absolutely seem that way. Yes. yes. As much as I want to make fun of Victoria Beckham for eating salt on toast. It's a bit sad. I want to acknowledge that she has spoken openly about the disordered food practices many of the women in Spice Girls had, and she's hinted that she has experienced anorexia and bulimia. She has also told a story about how she was on the Chris Evans TV show in 1999, shortly after she'd given birth, and he weighed her on live television to see if she'd lost the baby weight. Uh, Is your weight back to normal? Yeah, it is. Can I check? Do you mind? Oh, no, you did this to Jerry, didn't you? Come on. No, but Jerry was, like, really small. Yeah, but it's all right. This is horrible. She only got to number two. It's all right. Yeah, number two's great. Is it all right, Right, number two? You can afford number two, can't you? Hey, Stan's not bad at all, is it? And you can tell she was uncomfortable and she's like, you just did this to Jerry. And I'm like, you did this to someone else? (laughs) This is fucked. This is really bad. So I actually don't think we can blame her for her disordered behaviour. Do I wish she'd kind of stop being quite instructive about what she does? Absolutely. Sure. But what we've also got to remember about the particular state of Victoria Beckham is that she has four children. One of them is Brooklyn. And he's in the kitchen cooking up concoctions. That would turn anyone off their food, wouldn't it? Today I'm going to be making a grilled cheese with mushrooms and onion. You first start off by cutting the onion. That's why she eats the same thing. Actually, great excuse. That's what she's done because ever since Brooklyn was a little boy, (laughs) he goes, Mummy, do you want my dirt (laughs) pasta? No, Mummy doesn't because Mummy only eats her vegetables. Mummy. I think that that's what she's done Mm. so that she doesn't have to try his... What's the thing that he tried to make for his wedding with his Brooklyn burgers or whatever? Oh. No, no one wants that. No. He's got an experimental boy and we don't want to discourage his creativity. But we need him to practice elsewhere. Yeah, exactly yep. right. Not on mum. Is the marriage a sham? Jess, David and Victoria Beckham met in 1997 at a soccer game and she was the famous one. He was not. He was not like fully discovered yet. And he had a crush on her. In 1999, they had little Brookie (laughs) and four months later they got married. He was at the wedding. It was being pretty cute actually. (laughs) In 2003, they were living in Madrid and David was spotted at a nightclub with a woman. Oh, yeah. She was his assistant, Rebecca Luz. Everyone's like, the marriage is in trouble. News of the World, great publication, Mm. touched on them in the council courtroom before. They published a story from a source outlining several alleged sexual encounters between Beckham and Luz, 
after that night at the club. Why didn't they just hack the phone? Yeah, very respectful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we wouldn't hack the phone of Sir yeah. David Beckham. We're too busy hacking the phone of Prince Charles. But maybe they did hack a phone and this is how and they got some of the they information. Got the so they also reported that the two exchanged racy texts. That could be a bit of a <laughs> oh, hacking that, they situation. Did, sorry, they did hack the phones. Okay, good. The story claimed that Victoria contacted the assistant warning her to stay away. Then Luce's brother spoke to the tabloids and confirmed the affair. <sighs> David denied it very, very strongly in a statement, but then Rebecca did a tell-all interview with Sky TV about how her professional relationship with David turned romantic. I really want to taste what you got. She talked about the chemistry. She said people were not happy because I was being very unprofessional. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, you were, actually. Uh, You were. And he's a married man. He's a very generous lover. He gives a lot. He pleases. He knows what you want. It's all about you and not so much about him. It's nice. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So Victoria and David continued to deny this story. Poor Brookie. (laughs) I know, just a little boy. You were like five at this point. (sighs) The Beckhams filed a lawsuit against News of the World for this story. And after another story was published claiming David also had an affair with a beautician, the couple then amended the complaint to include another story by News of the World that said the couple's former nanny had given quotes that the Beckham marriage was a lie and they also sued the nanny for breach of confidence. Interesting. I know. So they said we are sick and tired of people trying to make money at the expense of our family. So that was kind of then. Then in 2018, Twitter exploded with rumours. Do you remember this? Yes, yes. So a British radio and TV presenter tweeted ominously that the couple would be trending later and the rumour was that Harper, Harper the yeah, their yeah. six-year-old daughter, her teacher had been fired oh, for being pregnant with David's this. baby. <gasps> yes. Then they were like, oh, rumours so were like, this. they're getting a divorce and the school teacher has already had the baby and Victoria will be discussing the split in the coming issue of Vogue. And everyone was like, Victoria's about to drop this info imminently. Yeah. And I would not normally get into the hype. You got into the hype. But the reason that I did is because, and it's been stated in the council courtroom, smoke, there's fire. Yeah. And I went, there is a lot of smoke here and something is about to blow. Well, Victoria Beckham's rep was like, there's no statement coming. It's all fake news. And explain the smoke, Victoria. Yeah, that's what I said. I said smoke, fire, question mark. (laughs) But (laughs) with the Beckhams, I'm confused about the smoke fire connection. Okay. Because we don't know if that happens. Theory, theory, theory. This is what happens with some people and some couples that are very, very rich. When you are very rich, you get to be very litigious. And when you are very litigious, and for people who don't know what that means because this isn't a real court. <laughs> means that you sue, sue a people. lot. Sue people because you have lots of money. You sue you're, you're you're a bit you're quite sue-y. Yeah. suey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're just left, right, and center. I'm going to sue, 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 sue. You scare people. Mm. And when you scare people, when you scare publications, the publications go, uh, not worth they it. They go, they sit down at the sun and they go to write about Elton John's Rottweiler's dogs mm. having their voice boxes removed. <laughs> And they go, no, we shan't today. Because that was a five-year court case last time. Because last time we got in trouble and it cost us a few dollars. Mm. And so I wonder if they have got themselves a reputation of being so litigious that people just don't touch it anymore. That when they see these things come up, when Mm. they have a source, when they hear, like maybe it is just an open secret. It's sort of like the open secret about Prince William liking Peggy. (laughs) I'm not meant to talk about that. He doesn't like it. They are also litigious. Okay, but that's the thing. I really can't tell whether these rumours are true or that's not. That's why all you can do is live by the rules in the court. Yeah. Which are how often do we see smoke without fire? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Every now and again. Every now and again. But we know that he cheated once and I checked the cancelled rule book. Did he cheat once? Cheat on me once. Cheat on me. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I, I think he cheated with that Rebecca chick. She could have just come out and said it. I no, don't know. They're doing no, no, a good no. job at confusing me as an individual. <laughs> Moving on to a $54 million debt. 
Last year, it was reported that Victoria Beckham's fashion label is facing debts of £54 million. Pounds, which is, let's do a rough double. Like a hundred million. A hundred and ten million Australian dollars. Yeah. It's a lot. It makes me so mad because it's like, I don't get it. I'm poor, but I'm not in a hundred mm. million dollars debt. How are you rich? Well said. How are you rich? And like, can you afford to pay it off, you know? Yeah. Victoria Beckham Holdings Group saw its total revenues fall by 6% due to the aftermath of the pandemic. But then reports are like, despite their losses, both Victoria and David's profits doubled during the same period. They made an impressive £11 million in 2020. And I'm like, the math isn't math. <laughs> it's not, it's not adding pounds up. £11 million isn't it's not 54 adding up, and million. that's why Brooklyn had to marry the billionaire. He married into money. And why he made his photograph book, because he thought that if his photograph book made lots of money, then he could pay off mum's debt. Brookie. With his elephant no photos. No one bought your book. I will actually maybe buy that book for you for Christmas. <laughs> that would actually be a funny gift. Like, I don't know where you'd get it. On cancelled the listeners. Oh, I reckon you get it off Amazon. Okay, cool, cool. Jesse, this did make me think. Maybe this is why Victoria Beckham got so mad at Nicola for not wearing the Victoria Beckham dress oh, to her she wedding. The publicity because she's yeah. like, "You're rich, you're a billionaire's daughter. Can yeah. you wear? If I can't get my own daughter-in-law to wear my, my stuff, clothes, then I'm in trouble. We're struggling. Yeah." But this is also an example of how I don't understand anything about business and how can you possibly owe that much money? How did the economy stay afloat? Can I have a dollar? <laughs> I don't know. I agree. And it also confirms what we did suspect to be true, which is that in the Brooklyn Nicola Peltz Beckham relationship, what we've got is we've got a poor family and it's the Beckhams. And yeah. that's a real beautiful detail of that story. Mm, mm-hmm. Speaking of, Vicky, do you hate your daughter in law? Yes or no? Recently, Victoria Beckham has been posting very chummy photos with her daughter in law, Nicola Peltz. That's because everyone said they hated each other. And now they have to go into full PR mode. They are. So Nicola Peltz Beckham is the wife of Brooklyn, which is interesting. And we've covered her on Cancelled before. And Jesse, you must remember the wedding dress saga, which was that straight after Brooklyn and Nicola's 2022 wedding, there were rumours that Nicola had refused to wear a dress designed by Victoria Beckham, opting instead for a custom Valentino gown. I do to gown. see that dress. I love to see the dress that oh, she... Oh, we've never seen it. No, no, no. Down. But like Victoria Beckham, her label... Is gorgeous. Is a... Yeah. Okay, no, I'm it's going gorgeous. on to it. Oh, it's on Netaporter. Okay, so it's a quite new, expensive. A new collection has actually just dropped and, oh, there's a stunning like kind of light green number. Okay, no, so really if, nice. if Vicky were to send you kind of a dress, to would wear you to my wear wedding? it on yeah. Insta? Absolutely. Okay, so it's quite expensive. So we've got a jacket, the double-breasted Chanel blazer, mm. and we are looking at £1,300 um, for that one. Yeah. Uh, it's all very, like, it would all look very good on Victoria Beckham. Correct. Not so much me. In interviews, Nicola said Victoria's atelier simply couldn't make the dress in time which was a realistic but far less interesting story than the gossip we had created yes. around it. But something was wrong at the time of the wedding. It just was. Because when Nicola shared photos from her wedding day, she didn't share a single one of Victoria or David. She even uploaded a nine-picture carousel. She might have looked shit in those ones. As someone who has shared pictures from my wedding, I have not even glanced at who was in those pictures with me. Okay. I don't care. Okay. It's where I look good. And if I looked good in a photo, I could be with the person I liked the least and I would share that image. I don't know if I've shared an image with my own family. She did this <laughs> caption, family is everything to me, and she didn't have anyone from the Beckham side. Not any, not Harper, who she used to be very close with. Okay, that's a little unusual. Not any of the yep. siblings, not David and Victoria. Okay. Victoria shared photos of the wedding too. She posted a photo of Nicola and Brooklyn with the caption, congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Beckham, welcome to the family. That's not the last name they chose. No, it's Peltz Beckham. It was Peltz Beckham. So that just seemed a little bit passive aggressive. She then posted a carousel of all the wedding guests who were wearing her dresses with the caption, so proud to have dressed some of my favourite ladies and best friends for the occasion. And obviously that didn't include the woman who just married her son. In August, 
Nicola appeared on the cover of Tatler with the headline, The New Mrs. Beckham, Oof. which felt pointed. It does feel pointed. In that they're still a Mrs. <laughs> Beckham. She's alive. She's right there. In early September, sources told the Daily Mail that Nicola never intended to wear the dress designed yep. by Victoria Beckham. Then the story came out that on the wedding day, David and Victoria's very close friend, Mark Anthony, who again, one married to Cleopatra, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 we do get confused. He was paid by the Peltzers to sing for the bride and groom. He actually gave a now, speech. Now, I bet he was paid by the Peltzers. Yeah, he actually gave a speech gushing about Victoria. And Nicola Nicola got really upset out or something. She stormed yeah, out. Yeah, great detail, great. And cried her eyes out. And then apparently Vicky also stole Nicola and Brooklyn's first dance song which was the one <laughs> Mark Anthony was dedicating to them. <laughs> so I like her. apparently most of the guests could tell something off had happened. It was uncomfortable for the couple who thought it was going to be a special moment for them and then it was Victoria and Brooklyn <laughs> dancing. I would have paid money for that. That is all absolute rumours. But, Jesse, I want you to just look at some of the headlines about Vicky and Nikki. Okay, Vicky v. Nikki. <laughs> Alison Boshaw, oh, we love it when the Daily Mail does kind of like a personal opinion, they put their names to it. Yeah. Why are Posh and Brooklyn's wife ignoring each other on Instagram? Fashion world is agog. Mm. I've never heard that word. Over a perceived distance between Nicola Peltz and her mother-in-law, Victoria Beckham. Here's another one. Is Victoria Beckham giving Nicola Peltz the cold shoulder? Body language expert Judy James claims family snap fails to show any sign of bonding between ladies despite peace summit. A peace summit? A peace summit. That's the thing that happens in like Switzerland between like Russia and the US. (laughs) The idea that there has been a peace summit between two women over a dress is why I do this this show. This podcast. Days went by and I didn't hear anything. Nicola Peltz, 27, claims she was blanked by mother-in-law Victoria Beckham after Star agreed to design her wedding dress as Brooklyn, 23, says, my wife is my first priority and I never want to see her upset. Yeah, you would say that, wouldn't you, Brooke? Oh, that's going to upset Posh. Okay. Yep. Nicola Peltz finally breaks silence on Cold War. Again, this is very Russia V. Cold War. The Cold War. Peace talks. Like with Victoria you. Beckham, as she admits, feud rumours started when mother-in-law was unable to design her wedding dress as Brooklyn declares everyone gets along. Brooklyn wouldn't know. <laughs> and if there was a peace summit slash Cold War. He wouldn't be invited. You just wouldn't bother. Yeah. You just. You'd say, you do the catering, Brookie. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> You'd say, please don't do the catering, Brookie. And it would just be Victoria Beckham, Nicola Peltz. Maybe David. Yeah, maybe Harper, maybe. Mm. But, I mean, Brooklyn would just be a distraction. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. A seat that doesn't. He's, yep. he's very kind of Roman Roy. Hey, hey, motherfuckers. He likes me. People like me. I look like a matador and everyone wants to fuck me. Jesse, it's time for charges and sentences. Jesse, my charge. Yes. We've said it once. We've said it many times in the council courtroom. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And the thing about Vicky is that there are two big Victoria Beckham stories, really. One is her marriage potentially being... I looked at the rule book, though. And being cheated on by David Beckham is not a crime. No, 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 no. That's, I'm not saying that. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm not saying that. <laughs> okay. So. The sham. Is that what so, you're okay. Well, yeah. So basically. I respect any woman in a sham. <laughs> there's two threads of gossip okay. is what I'm saying. There's, there's the her marriage. marriage. Yes. Her marriage to David. Yeah. And there's the Nikki feud. Is she a woman who has little respect for the institution of marriage? Maybe. So my charge is where there's smoke, there's fire. Okay. Yes. And my sentence is, if you're going to have these two kind of parallel stories happening, Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give Victoria publicity advice Mm -hmm. from me. And that is that what we do when we don't want people to talk about one thing, (sighs) we've got to talk about the other thing. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. The Royals are very good. A, a swap Saruni. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I can imagine she doesn't want people to talk about her marriage. No, no, no. And it's like, I mean, with the fire smoke analogy, if there's smoke over here, throw a bomb. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then just it's a distraction, a bait and switch. A bait and switch. So I don't think she wants anybody talking, hypothesizing, thinking about her marriage. And she's done a very good job of that. People often forget about the cheating until it comes so up maybe again. maybe she leaked the debt. She was like, guys, I'm in debt. Yeah. Well, no, I don't think the debt, <sighs> rich people are weird. I don't think the debt is like that much of a big deal for them. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fine. Okay. okay. It's more a crime from my end. Okay. But I think she needs to pour petrol. Okay. On um, the Nikki, Nikki feud wedding dress. Billionaire. So leak more to the Daily Mail about yes. Nicola Peltz. Yes. And I need petrol port. I need matches. Okay, so I you need, need more details. I need. Do you need a tell all? Well, I think she needs to leak stuff. I would love mm-hmm. if Vicky was responsible when Nelson Peltz <laughs> sued Nelson. the wedding planners. Yeah. Yes. And we learned all this stuff about the wedding and it came off so well for the Beckhams. It's like, oh, the Beckhams were very organised with their guest list. But Nicola was chaos. Yeah. I hope it was Vicky who leaked that. And I just think if Vicky could really create a diversion yes, with Nicola and Brooklyn, they don't mind. Nicola and Brooklyn, they're very happy to be the centre of attention. Yeah, just she's a new on... Mrs. Brooklyn. And... <laughs> Mrs. Brooklyn. 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 She is a new Mrs. Brooklyn. Beckham. She is a new Mrs. Beckham. And the thing is, Nicola and Brooklyn ain't getting anywhere with talent. They can no. only get places with gossip. Yes. So they're quite yes. happy if Vicky wants to just make a Throw big under story the go. Yeah. They're crazy. The family hates them. They're going, yep, cool magazine cover. I get paid by Vogue to make a shitty meal for Nicola. Mm. That's all Brookie wants to do. So basically I think that Victoria's got to pour petrol on one story to extinguish, extinguish the, other. the other. Fantastic. All right, my chard. It's one I've never liked. Oh. My issue with Victoria Beckham is her you-can-be-anything role modelling, which has particularly affected her eldest, Brooklyn. Yeah. And I think that in being a... Singer for the Spice Girls and then being a designer and then just falling upwards through her entire career when she doesn't appear to have any specific talent. I think that she has unfortunately suggested to Brooklyn, a white man, Mm. that he too can do anything. Yeah. And that's a concern because his other parent is one of the best footballers the world has ever known. And so what we have is a mess of a man who can't, find himself, who is finding himself on the public stage. It's very, very sad. Okay. My sentence is. Well, before you get there. Yeah. I read an interview where Victoria said that all of the boys had like contracts for big football clubs, like they were signed because everybody thought they'd be they'd professional be football stars. Don't. And she remembers the moment Brooklyn said, I don't want to do it, mummy. He said, I don't want to do it. He turned it down. Yeah. Said, wow, I don't want to do it. because I've got other dreams. Yeah, photography. I think he also wasn't particularly yeah, good. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Okay, but that would be really hard. You've got this deal, and you're not any good. Here's my thing: Victoria Beckham gets into the Spice Girls. Yeah, realizes she's not a very good singer. Yeah, does she quit? No, she keeps going hard. She tours the world. Yeah. <laughs> she has a solo career, and she simply says, "Turn down my mic." Yeah. And so I think the lesson there and the Don't sentence. Don't you dare say never give up. Yeah, for no, Brooklyn. No, You choose one thing, never give up. He got to keep chefing. He got to keep chefing. <laughs> like a long-term thing. He's got to keep chefing, yeah, even though he's terrible. But are you a chef if no one eats your food? Sure. Because sure. the thing was people were listening to her music. Yeah. All right, my sentence is for Brooklyn because you know what? Every week, really, my sentence is for Brooklyn because <laughs> he's a criminal. And he needs to commit to one thing and one thing only. Ten years of chefing. Yeah. Perfect it. Perfect it. Do one thing, do it well. Well, Victoria never did it well. Sorry. Do one thing. One thing. Get passably good at it. <laughs> do one thing and get passably good at it. Yeah. I think that is the lesson. 
for today's Cancelled. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Cancelled. The executive producer of Cancelled is Talissa Bazaz with audio editing by Tom Lyon. We will have all the receipts on the twins underscore thoughts on Instagram. And if you follow us there, can you please send us recommendations of who you reckon we should do? Yeah. If you have any ideas, if you're looking around, our best ideas have come from you guys. So any suggestions and then, of course, any lazy girl stories. Always oh, looking always, for Always, them. always, always. Lazy girl. She's a lazy girl. Is it the ultimate lazy girl move to be on tour and just turn down your mic? <laughs> yeah. I reckon she's a lazy girl deep down. Yeah. And then me in 54 mil debt. Oh, yeah. 